Canada's Under Review podcast, episode four. I'm Venetia, your host, and I'm here with Aaron. Hey, Aaron, it's been a while. Hey, well, we had a busy summer. Hey, last Aaron. last one we did was actually a special podcast, so it wasn't even in the line of podcasts per se. So no, we're only on not. number four. Yeah. But uh, I'm excited to get back at it again. Oh, me too. Um, today's an exciting one. We're going to be talking a lot of CJFL, a lot of youth sports. Football, yes. Football. We just talk, exactly. talk like games. Like we've had games, we've had exciting games. It's, it is the middle of prime football season right now. So yeah. Things have been quite crazy around here, but I say this all the time. This time of year, okay, you can smell I, it in the air. I love it. You see, it's maybe it's the, it's probably just the grass, but you can smell football in the air. Football does not have a distinct smell. Okay, maybe but. I'm telling you, people people will understand what I'm talking about. Football has a distinct smell in the air. Maybe that's just from someone who's... Okay, whatever, whatever, anyway, whatever you say. It's a, there's, a fo- there's a football smell in the air, and it smells like lots of great games and lots of action. And Aaron's loving it. I'm loving it. I'm excited. <laughs> I had three screens set up, and then... Anyways, we'll talk about that. So <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll talk about that. We jumped in the gun a little I know, bit. I'm getting excited. I get a little excited sometimes. Just a little bit. Okay, so before we talk football, uh, I, this podcast is presented by Bold Athletics. Bolt is the official supplier of online strength and conditioning services for Football Canada. To find out how your team can be in top competitive shape with sport-specific workouts, visit www.boltathletics.com. Alrighty, so let's talk some football. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? What, what, let's, uh, narrow me down a little bit because I could talk about a lot of different things. I know you could. You yes. could go on for hours. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, let's start with the CJFL Canadian Junior Football League. It's uh, our national Canadian football league that has what? So this is, it's for junior players. Yeah. This is uh, you know generally you're between the ages of seventeen and twenty two. Uh, there's three, three different conferences. conferences. Um, Six teams each. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and this is, so I'm actually an alumni of the CJFL, so I, it, it's so close to my heart, both as a coach and as a player. Um, yeah, you have the BCFC, which is uh, British Columbia. You have the PFC, which is kind of, which is your prairie conferences. So it's uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. And then you have the OFC, so your Ontario Football Conference. All right, let's start with, uh, let's kind of, let's, actually, let's start overall CJFL. What are your thoughts been so far on the on the season? So I think if you if I were to look at this from the outside at the start of the year, um, it's basically going the way that I thought it was gonna go overall. So just give a little background on the on the, the CGFL. The CGFL has been it's um, been around since. Uh, 1883. 1883. It's it's got a storied history, like a a really storied history. And a part of that storied history is uh, kind of a dominance out of Saskatchewan. Yeah, the hilltops, especially. Uh, They've won what the past five five years? Six? Yeah, five Five, years. There was a little blip in there um, when they were Giant Thunder. But out of Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan has been primarily the dominant force. Uh, the BI Raiders had a, a couple of years where they were a dominant force out of BC. Um, it's kind of changed over to Langley, Langley and Okanagan in the yeah. past couple of years. Um, but the I guess the division for me that has been uh, definitely a lot more parity is the OFC this year. So, I mean, we'll talk a little bit about teams and standings, but there's been a lot more parity at the top of the OFC with the top three teams. Um, but BC Langley's kind of been that that one team. That, that team, yeah, they looked really good this year. Yeah. Um, the sorry, I'm just trying to pull up the standings here. Um, the Westmore Rebels have also looked really good. They had a well, we had we had that game as like our, our game, game of the week. week. Yeah. It was just um, and the first game that they played against each other, it was a fairly close game. So we you know we looked at that game, we're like, okay, you know, you got number one Okanagan Sun. Or sorry, Langley Rams, number two, West Shore Rebels, you know, looking for a second game. The VI Raiders, though, also have been yeah, pretty they've impressive. Been a good team in the in the PFC or in the in the BCFC. In the BCFC and uh, I just think no the last game that Langley had against West Shore, they just really made that gap I think a lot more significant than it was at the early part of the season. Now the BCFC has a is a different 
conference than the other conferences in the sense that they start a lot earlier and they play, I think it's three more games. They have two more games. Two more games. They have two more games. Yeah, than, than the other uh, conferences. So they get to see each other a little bit more than everybody else. So, I mean, you always say this all the time, it's hard to play teams multiple times. So who knows when you get to play playoffs. But yeah. right now it looks like Langley is is head and shoulders above some of the other teams based on the scores. But, you know, West Shore, Okanagan, uh, and VI, yeah. they're kind of right there in the mix, too. I mean, playoffs, the best thing about football playoffs, it's not like anything most other can, sports. Anything can happen. Right? Um, you're not playing seven-game series. You're playing one-off games where, and the, the cliche <laughs> is any given Sunday. But literally, no, but for it's CFL, it's, it's a Saturday true. or a Sunday. Yeah, but literally anything could happen. And that's, yeah. I think that's what, a big part of what makes it really exciting to watch. Is that, yeah, your team could finish 8 0 or whatever in the season, but they could still be out first round playoffs. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, moving into the, the PFC, it's been a one horse race, but not as big of a gap uh, as in the previous year. So, well, the Hilltops obviously are the stand out there. They, when you talk about Canadian junior football, they are the benchmark that if you are striving to build an organization that's the the pinnacle of what you want to try to to be and Regina Edmonton um, they have been making strides to get there Regina and and the Saskatoon Hilltops have tough physical close competitive games for sure Um, and the Hilltops are a little bit younger this year they lost you know some some senior uh, players, so they're a little more susceptible. The thing that keeps them away from everybody else is their coaching staff is... Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, Coach Sargent, he just does a fantastic job. He just had, or coached his... Uh, it was it, a milestone the game. Win, the win that... Or, yeah. yeah, he has the I don't most remember wins. The specific I think it's over 200 off wins. Off the top of my head, but uh, that was a few weeks ago. And that's pretty impressive. That you reach that milestone with one team. Yeah, and well, and the, the thing that's most impressive about what the Hilltops have done um, is that in Canadian junior football, for you to be successful, it's about can you keep guys in your program yeah. from age 18 to when they max out at 22. A lot of the times, um, guys will come play junior because maybe they're not ready for university yet, or maybe because they their college uh, focus or they want to go into the job force right away or maybe eventually they want to move on to university so for other teams you might only see guys for two or three years but the, to be able to be the strength and keep guys keep guys and they the do full, yeah well it helps when you have a winning record it's, it's a little bit yeah. hard to be like oh I don't want to be a part of that again right yeah well and the other thing too is Saskatchewan we've talked about this a little bit in other podcasts Saskatchewan which is a different beast in terms of football but one of the things that uh, the Hilltops have done a really good job of, of building that community support, they do some great things, like they have an yeah. alumni game where their alumni come and play. They, they do a lot of uh, really good things. So from a coach perspective and from a community perspective, they put themselves on a, on a platform to be able to provide their yeah. athletes I the think best. that's just like a Saskatchewan thing, like you said, though, because yeah. you see a lot of the, even like the uh, Rough Riders and the CFL, you, you see like the same uh, community and everything built around that and I, I think it's because it starts at such a grassroots level and then they build it up to juniors and uni- even university like it's it's just like Saskatchewan football culture yeah and back to coach Sergeant he's at over 200 wins yeah and it's, it's crazy it's, it's crazy. I, I don't know if that will be matched for a long time so no. um, congrats to him for uh, reaching that milestone yeah though. Unbelievable, uh, and, and not only that, it's just it's just a piece of fo- Canadian football history that uh, is pretty cool that the CGFL can say that. Can say that they're a part. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Let's move on to the OFC. OFC. Uh, so we got who? London up here, Windsor, and Hamilton as our top three kind of teams. Yeah. What are your thoughts here? So I, I'll I'll put I this know. out there right away. I have to <laughs> show my bias. I am a theater alumni and um, I'm actually really impressed with what they're doing right now 
and so we were a little bit crushed when we lost this past yeah, weekend to Windsor. <laughs> it was a tough. It's hard to go into Windsor, uh, play the Frat Men in in their hometown. Windsor is a, a tough place to play. Um, their fans are are very engaged mm-hmm. in in their team. Um, earlier on in the season, London had had won against Windsor in London. Um, Hamilton dropped the game to London, but Windsor beat Hamilton. So it's a, it's a three-way a, triangle. Yeah, a pretty, pretty tight race. And even if you look at all their stats, like team stats, uh, their points for and against, it's, it's so similar between the, the top three there. Yeah. Which is nuts. Like, it just shows how much uh, parity there is between those three teams. Yeah, and I think, I mean, this is going to be the interesting piece because it's always been, okay, the OFC, um, generally competitive, the top three, generally the auto seniors usually up there, they are uh, lost a little bit of stride the past couple of years. Um, doesn't mean that they won't be in the mix in the playoffs potentially, but the biggest question is always, can this OFC, whoever comes out of the OFC, yeah. can they come out of the OFC and compete with either the BCFC or the PFC? That's always the question. And right now, I love the parity in the OFC. But the question still stands... If they're going to be able to match what's happening in the other two conferences. Yeah, and, and it's tough because um, in Ontario, it's, it's a, we talk about Saskatchewan and PSC being a different beast. Ontario's a different beast too. We have a ton of universities that play uh, football in, in Ontario. So although we're a big population pool, the, the reality is, is it still gets diluted. Well, yeah, right? and there's a lot of places that these kids can go play, and that's, yeah. I think, uh, makes a little bit of a difference compared to out in BC and the, yeah. uh, the Prairie. So I'm excited to see how the OFC shakes up, and I'm, I'm even more excited to see who comes out of the OFC and where... We've seen Windsor the past couple of years kind of come out and be competitive, but not definitely not enough still to be able to, to, be able to push past either the BCFC or the PFC. Yeah. So I'm hoping that there's some strides here. We'll talk a little bit about kind of our projections and stuff for the CJFL, but it's kind of where we sit right now with the, the three conferences. It's, you know, overall. So Hamilton right now is the OFC leader. Not um, by much. Not by much. No. Um, and, and again, I, I think one of our games of the week this week is Hamilton and Windsor. So, you know, Windsor already beat Hamilton once this year. Can they do it again? And if they do, how does that shake out the... The remainder of the playoff schedule in the BCFC you know it looks like right now with two games left in the season that Langley's got a pretty good lead in the standings yeah I would say so I mean yeah they haven't lost yet this year so yeah. so then it really t- just shakes out team to play, you know? between West Shore VI Okanagan West Shore or VI it's going to be a pretty like, tight 2-3-4 race there in the BCFC yeah. because they're all like And then, you know, in the, in the PSC, it's, okay, who's two, three, four, right? Yeah. And, you know, with two games left in their season, um, you know, not like Saskatoon's out of the the ability to lose a game. Like, they still have um, two tough games in Winnipeg and in uh, Edmonton. Um, the so, Edmonton game will be good. Yeah, so there's, you know, there's going to be, I, th- I still think based on the standings now, I and mean, we'll talk about it in a bit, but think where their standings are now is probably where they'll end up being but um, there's a lot of excitement in the CGFL this year and I think I'm, I'm excited to see some of that cross play between the conferences it, yeah. it'll be it'll be exciting for sure yeah all right want to move to some U sports talk about where we are so far at U sports talk about U sports U sports is our Canadian University amateur football highest level of amateur play in Canada right yes and there's <laughs> four, four, conferences. four conferences, yeah. Four conferences. Yeah. Sorry, I have little, to little, diff- little difference in little different than the CJFL, right? yeah. where we have three, we have four conferences. Four conferences with twenty seven teams, and U Sports Football was founded in. You want to take a guess? Do you know? Uh, I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna say well, I don't know if they include that McGill game, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say. 1905? That's off by a lot. Okay, well. <laughs> 61. 1961? 
Well, that's what it says. That's when the first uh, the inter-university okay, play well, probably occurred. Why, yeah. Well, it says founded in 1961. Right, okay, yeah. Because before that, it was probably just conferences, I assume. Mm. We'll have to get a sports we'll historian have, to give we'll us We'll have the, to double-check this. Well, you, I mean, you're right. I just, I assume that conference play probably occurred before that. Yeah, I assume. You know, it's, it's not uh, stated, so yeah. we're just okay, going to well, go with founded in I was very so wrong, is what, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is fair. These sports yeah. was also formerly known as CIS football, in case any of you are a little confused. And, uh, yeah. all right, where do we want to start? you want to start out west or out east? Uh, or in the middle? <laughs> let's start out east, I think. AUS. Uh, in the AUS. Yeah, yeah. So what what have your thoughts been so far in, in the AUS? It's been very one sided, I think, with uh, Mount A kind of uh, Acadia. Or sorry, not Mount A, Acadia. Um, Acadia kind of uh, taking over the AUS up there. I mean, they're undefeated. No one else has particularly stood out to me in the AUS. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. I I agree. I think that that Acadia St. Mary's game, it was a lot tighter than the score showed. I watched the majority of that game, and I think by the end of the third quarter, it was still a one-score game. Yeah. But Acadia just I just ran away with it. St. Mary's has really just not impressed me this year. I I I think I had higher expectations for them given maybe what happened. Year. I mean, they're three and one. Yeah, but like, I just, I don't know. I feel like the games that they've played, like, they haven't, they haven't stood out to me. So here's a stat. Keep in mind that they've played one less game than the rest of the That's conference. That's true. That is true. Um, they have 110 points for. Acadia has 204 points for. Yeah, which is what I'm saying. So it's a significant difference. Yeah. So, and keep in mind, St. Mary's is the second highest scoring team in that conference. So, but... But Mount A would be behind them with 105. Like, yeah. I don't know. So there's a pretty big disparity, I think, between the number one team right and now. And the number two. And that's, the number that's two. That's what I was getting at. Which is unique, because normally, I would say the AOS is probably the conference with the most parity. That's what I was going to say, too. Um, also, with Bishops in there this year, um, it changes it up a little bit. Yeah, so this is the second year that Bishops has been in the AUS, and uh, you know the first year they didn't have a like, they had they had a tough time compared to what I thought they would have. But they're two and three right now, no, sitting in, a, in a good bad. spot yeah. to to be able to make a playoff push. And I think uh, from what I've seen, they've been, they've been getting better every week. No, I agree. Yeah. I think I think in the AUS, Bishops has been the team that has surprised me the most in a positive way, and. Yeah, I look for I look for to see what they're gonna do because it could be interesting. Yeah, and I'm what I'm most impressed by I think is Acadia's ability to put up points uh, multiple ways. So their ground game has been super effective. Um, Hunter Gennard, I mean, we'll talk about their pass game a little bit when we talk about potential head cravings, but I think Hunter Gennard has been really good. I think they have a plethora of receivers. Um, William Malawi is a you know one of our guys, a Team yeah. Canada alum. Yeah, Canada. Um, but he's you know I would say right now he's you know one of the top four receivers who is on that team, um, and they've been able to spread the ball around. So I'm we talked about the CGFL a little bit, and we talked about the OFC team being able to come out and compete with the rest of the conferences. The AUS is the same way. Yeah, right? and like I Acadia like nothing against what they've done this year because it's been great, but I don't know if they can go out and compete against, like, a Western or a Laval or Montreal. I would say, and we'll talk about it, I think, a little bit later, that Acadia is best suited today to go out and compete against another conference than they've ever been. Well, than they've ever been. Yeah. But is it good enough? Like, that's the question, right? And that's... It'll be interesting to see what happens. Well, when we talk about basically anything in university sport and a lot of the controversies that's always out there do we change the playoff format, structure yeah. format um i think this is this is the year that maybe whoever comes out because it's not a foregone conclusion that acadia comes out um can that team compete so um i like i like what i see from acadia right now so yeah 
Yeah, I like their chances if they do come out. It'll be it'll be interesting to watch. I think. Yeah. Um, come playoffs, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about. Let's go to the other side of the country. Let's go Canada West. So those dinos are still up there at number one. You but but they just lost this week. They did, which is very surprising. They yes. lost to Saskatchewan. Um, I mean, I, I read a stat, and I don't quote me. You can probably find it on Twitter, but I think it's their first regular season loss in like three years. Yeah, I saw that too. I think it's since twenty seventeen. Yeah, which yeah. is one incredibly impressive that on his face. Well, that they haven't lost right. since. Yeah. Then. <laughs> also, Two, it goes back to kind of what we talked about in the in the CJFL with the the Hilltops of yeah. you know your top team and then kind of everybody else. But it looks like there's some cracks a little bit. Okay, can we please talk about Alberta? Because I've just been absolutely, like, impressed and, like, blown away by this Alberta Golden Bears team. They have surprised a lot of people. They are currently sitting in second place in the in the conference. And they could win the conference, potentially. Yeah. Potentially. So their only loss so far has come to Calgary. And it was a 10-point game. And that, it came down to the end of the game. Like, it was, it was a close game throughout. I think Alberta's trending upwards. I think Calgary has had some injury issues, and I think that's kind of what showed in that Saskatchewan game. Um, nothing to take away from Saskatchewan. I thought they played a really great game. I thought their defense played strong, and I thought that their run game with Adam Ackert is, uh, is taken off. Yeah. Um, but I think that Calgary, unfortunately, whether it's injuries or maybe it was just, uh, you know, sometimes you play games. This is another place where, you, you know, you play some Things games. Happen. A decent yeah. amount of time. Um, I, this is the year that I think Alberta is a, a unique position because they they've struggled for the majority the of their years, yeah. of, of their time the past couple of years. I think Chris Morris, Chris Morris has always done a really great job in recruiting. I think okay. he's a, a really great head so, coach. Yeah, Alberta's recruiting class. Can we just like touch on that a little bit? I mean, it's not even the end of the season, <laughs> like, and it, it's like, hey. Crazy. <laughs> there's there's most of our national team top 100 guys. There's you know yeah. Canada Cup guys. There is a lot of yeah. upcoming talent uh, going to that Golden Bears roster, yeah. and I think for the next couple of years they are going to be very very good in that Canada West. Uh, well, and you're starting to see the fruits of Chris Morris's labor, right? Like yeah. this, uh, th- it's not a fluke what they're doing this year. And like you said, I think it's it's a trend up. Yeah, yeah. I agree. What about uh, just a shift a little bit to Manitoba, the Bison? I was a little bit surprised by by them, to be honest, this year. Uh, honestly, I um, I think Coach Doby is a fantastic coach, and he's uh, mm-hmm. and I think what they do there in that program is they have some of the best facilities, mm-hmm. um, and I think that they do a great job from a coach perspective. My thing is that I just don't know what team is going to come out every week in the um, West. Well, it's just Manitoba. Like I, I don't know, is it the Manitoba that is, um, you know, winning games, or is it the Manitoba that makes mistakes? And you know, they're three and two, but it's not like they're three and two because, you know, they're a good team. They're a really good team. I think the games that they've won, they've looked really good, but the games that they've lost have kind of been like. Yeah. Well, you know, when you look at the games that they have lost, they're not a huge disparity between between the, the teams, but I think that for them, it's just a matter of can they be consistent, can they eliminate mistakes, um, they have a lot of playmakers, they, so they're a team that you, you probably don't want to play in the playoffs, you don't want to play them because, again, depending on, on how they come out, they can win any game that they play, so I think the Canada West um, has a has a pretty good parity right now. Um, kind of unfortunate that BC, UBC is on five. I think that they've just struggled to find a quarterback that is... Yeah. Um, Who can take them. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Regina, um, I not, thought that they've played tight games. They have. And I think they've just had, like, it's been come down to a couple of plays where they've yeah. made a, a mistake or something like that's happened and it's been unfortunate that the score hasn't yeah. quite come out in their favor. Yeah. Well, and I think they've found, they've found their quarterback for the future. You know, they, they lost a, a Heck Creighton winner who was a 50-year guy, and I thought Josh Donnelly has done a really good job this year so far. He, he puts up numbers. He doesn't make a ton of mistakes. Um, I think he's got an arm. 
So I, I think they're set up. I, I just, they just been on the wrong side of a couple of games this year, I think, so. Yeah, and the Huskies, any thoughts on them? Saskatchewan, they're kind of like Manitoba. Um, you know, they have a big win against Calgary. Yep. Um, they lost a, a really close game to Alberta. Uh, they're, they're very much the same. Those top four teams, honestly, you get in the playoffs, you get shake out anyway. I, I wouldn't want to have to pick those or pick the yeah. spread for those games. No, right? I wouldn't either. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a Canada West. This is tough, tough, uh, yeah. conference. Okay. Let's go back over to the East. So we'll do RSEQ. Yeah. So they, the RSEQ has been, it's been interesting this year. Yeah, actually. kind of. I mean, um, Jim Mullen and, and the guys over at Green Iron Nation, they always say basically it's rock fight. They're just throwing <laughs> rocks all over. And it's true. Yeah, uh, it's most true. of these games are they're low scoring games and they're tough physical defensive games. Um, the the thing that's been most surprising I think with this conference is that there have been a lot closer games. Yeah, there hasn't been many blowouts. Montreal Concordia just had a, a, a three three point difference in their last game. Uh, Concordia and McGill have really, I think, have shown the growth in their programs. Although, you know, Concordia's one and four. McGill's two and three. But the but games that, have been competitive. Exactly. I don't think their, yes. their uh, results speak to how well the, those two teams have been playing. Yeah. And to be playing against, like, teams like Laval and teams like Montreal, that, like, speaks even more. Yeah. So, and I, that's, that's the thing that I think a lot of people, maybe if you're just a, a, a casual fan looking from the outside, Having to play, like you said, Montreal and Laval every year. Those it's are the, some of the two. It's, they're the two, like two, two top Laval, programs in the country. Laval, right? yeah. How many times has Laval won the Vanier Cup yeah. over the past few years? And so, like, you know what's the difference? Montreal and Laval play each, every each other every year, and the difference is generally three points or yeah. two points, right? So if you're a McGill and Concordia, I think like, well, you're speaking about the Montreal Concordia game the other day. Like, if you're Concordia, I think you have to feel really good about that yeah. game. Although I know if you're head coach Brad Collinson, you're saying we need to win those games now, right? And yeah. I think that's you're close to seeing some some greater parity in, in, in the RSEQ. RSEQ. Yeah. Um, Sherbrooke, I I hope that they I, it's, it looks like the recruiting's getting a little stronger, um, and we really need this conference to be to have more parity, just like every conference needs to have more parity. We'll talk about the OUA in a second because I think I think it's getting there though. Yes, slowly, I agree. but I think it's I think it's more this year than it was ever. Yeah, pretty much. Well, so right now the RCQ like Montreal's five and zero, and Laval's three and one. Um, again, this could shake out any way from those top two teams, but I still think even though those games are a little closer with Miguel and Correa competing against Laval and Montreal, I still think it's a two horse race for the oh, most part. Yeah. But for yeah, for now, you get in the playoffs. And, and anything can happen. Right now, you know, based the way it's seeded, Montreal plays Concordia, you just... Almost you know, lost. Almost <laughs> lost the game to Concordia. Um, so, we'll see. It, it, it's exciting to see a little bit more parity, and, uh, and I'm encouraged by what um, all the head coaches are doing. Also, all four head coaches, Montreal, Laval, McGill, and Concordia, they're all Team Canada uh, oh, alumni oh, as coaches, so... It's yeah. crazy. All right, let's... Uh, Go over to the big one. The, the OUA. OUA. Yeah, big one because there's so many well, teams. There's so many. There's 11 teams in this uh, yeah. conference. Um, so where do we even start? Let's start with, I guess, let's talk about Western because Western is Western and they're doing what Western does like they always do. Yeah. They are a powerhouse. 6-0. and uh, They've looked very good this year again. Um, thoughts? Well, it's interesting. So the Western coaching staff almost completely turned over, um, but you have a steadfast there in, in, in the head coach, Coach Barry Marshall. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, you have a quarterback, senior quarterback Chris who Martin. has been there, has won a Vanier. Um, he knows what it takes. He's tough. He's physical. So you have those two pieces. You can have a couple things move around. You lose your two best running backs. You have Trey Hume step in and and carry the load. Yeah, exactly. Um, Cole Majoros, uh, he's a great wide receiver. So, like you said, Western is doing what Western does. <laughs> yeah. Um, with that being said, I think Guelph put on a pretty good show against Western. Okay, I, I'm just going to... Guelph is a, I'm a, I'm a 
very, very big uh, Guelph Griffins fan, so excuse my bias. <laughs> but um, Aaron's shaking his head over here. Cause, so. I have a Western alum <laughs> and a U Ottawa former coach. Also, the, the Guelph Griffins just beat. Uh, Ottawa pretty bad. Yeah, we can talk. We can talk about that. We can talk about. It. Anyways, uh, back to uh, Western. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Guelph. They've been very good uh, defensively this year. Like their D line has been a rock wall, and uh, they held Western to what, no touchdowns. No touchdowns. No touchdowns. They scored all their points on field, field goals and safety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that I thought that was really impressive, and now. Keep this in mind. That was at Guelph. Yeah, now, playing at Western is a whole playing at Western other, is a whole different beast. Whole other beast. I yeah. mean, the only loss that Western has suffered in the regular season in the past was when Western went to Carlton. It's hard to go into London and, and win. win. Yeah, that's, that's a tough hard. thing to do against Western. Um, I thought Mac played Western pretty tough too, and Max looks good this year. Windsor at half. Well, was it not for one touchdown would have been up they, it was they were leading almost the majority of the first half western came back they they you know they ended up taking the lead going into half and then they rolled it from there but man i'm seeing a lot of really good things from these new head coaches because that's one of the things that's unique about the oua this year there was there was what six no, four. Or four four one being coach Patasic with mcmaster who returned as the head coach um, as you can see, McMaster's four and one right now. They've been doing a great job. I think Andreas Duick. He's been killing it. He's also national team alum. National team alum. Gold medal. Yes. Mexico. <laughs> um, I think that the new head coaches in Queens and Windsor and Guelph oh, and Mac. Coach Patasic coming back <laughs> has helped to shake up the OUA at least beyond Western and even in creating some more parity to make the OUA a very competitive and exciting uh, division. There have been a lot of good games this year in the OUA. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on Waterloo? Uh, coach Bertoya, since he's become the head coach, has taken that program uh, from a program that had taken its lumps for a variety of reasons and has turned into a, a team that is not only competitive, but every week you are basically afraid to, to play to this play them, exactly. The Ford brothers, uh, Trey Ford at quarterback, is explosive. Yeah, he's um, good. He's really good. So I think Waterloo has a ton of potential. They're very dangerous on offense. I think for them, their, their weak point, I would say, is um, they can give up a lot of points on defense. Like right now, they have the fourth most points against. If I look, maybe it's fifth point. Fifth? No, fourth. Um, yeah, fourth. So... I think for them, they can score with the best of them. Their defense just needs to play a little bit tighter. Um, but uh, again, Waterloo, from a program who has struggled over the past years to being a, a program that um, is looking at a, you know, potentially hosting a playoff seed, depending how the rest of this um, goes on, is, is impressive. Uh, the one team that I think has been the most surprising in the OUA this year has been Toronto. Yeah, I was just about to say the Varsity Blues. Um... They have been very, very impressive. Uh, they are led by their quarterback, Clay Takara. He has been a monster for them. Absolutely yeah. very, very impressed with his game. Yeah. Um, that whole team, like, I don't think anybody expected them to come out the way that they did this year and play and compete at the level that they have been. <laughs> well, they're two and three. And, you know, if you looked, if anyone looked at this record, you'd be like, two and three. I mean, that's not even 500. <laughs> What, like, why are we talking about Toronto? Well, the reason we're talking about Toronto is that, you know, there's another team who, in the past couple of years, have, have taken their licks in the OUA, uh, and now you're seeing a fifth-year quarterback uh, under a second-year head coach, and coach, the other coach, Marshall, um, and they play a real wide-open offense. They throw the ball downfield, and they can be a threat to any team that they play. And right now, they're knocking on the door of potentially being able to get a playoff. A playoff season, yeah. Um, they had a tough loss against Carlton. They had to come up to Carlton. Carlton, I thought, played a very good game against Toronto. But um, 
I think that they have the potential to, to maybe squeak their way in. They have a tough road ahead of them. Um, but I'm, I'm impressed with what, they're, with what they're doing. Oh, I'm with you there. Um, do you want to talk? Did you have any more thoughts on the OUA before I move on? Um, <laughs> the only thing that I would say here is that right now, I think you, you kind of have a sense of one, two. Uh, I think Western and McMaster right now have probably solidified, solidified themselves yeah. as one, two. Uh, maybe Waterloo has an opportunity to slip in there depending on what happens. But I think the really exciting thing is maybe four, eight, four to nine right now, basically. It's really close. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really it, close. Who, how are the playoffs going to kind of flush themselves out in the only way? Because the only way is different. There's a quarterfinals in the only way, so six teams make the playoffs, the first two teams get buys. So, the, you know, there's a lot on the stake, and, and you want to host a playoff game, obviously, if, if in so the quarterfinals. It's so much easier to play at home than it is to play at home. Plus, you get those ticket else. sales, right? Well, yeah. You always want <laughs> ticket sales. But, yeah. uh, the, the, obviously, you want to get into the playoffs, and that's a, the big piece, because you never know. In the playoffs, you never know. Queens is a tough team. Um, but, Laurie yeah. is a tough team. Like, they, I think they're trending upwards again. I think they had a tough start to the year, and I think they're trending upwards again. Toronto, you never know. Carlton, Ottawa, Guelph. Like we're talking really, about a lot of teams here. There's really nobody, like, who's really out. Because if you look at the sixth seed right now, which is Carlton, they're sitting with four points, and then there's like four other teams who have four points, and then Windsor, yeah. like, with two, like anything really could happen still. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it like exciting. Yeah. Is that like you could be in fifth place, fourth place right now, but you could not make the playoffs, and a lot can still happen. Yeah, so I'm excited to see how this shakes out. There's only two two more games left in the the, the regular season for the the OUA in the sports, but I mean we got Panda coming up. Actually, okay, yeah. no, we gotta talk about Panda a little bit. I'm, I'm no longer technically a GG, so uh, can talk I can talk about this a little. I'm super. It's it's the Panda is nuts. It's nuts. It's, it's the nuts. biggest amateur football game in Canada. They sell out. A full CFL size stadium. Twenty four thousand fans every single year. It's it gets it's gonna be crazy. Out. And the thing is here, it wouldn't matter if both Ottawa and Carlton were undefeated or if they were zero and five. It would still sell. It out. would <laughs> still be an unbelievable game. One team could be undefeated. One team could be zero and five. It'll still be a competitive game. And the reason is, is there is a entrenched, just rivalry. Deep rivalry. And it, and it bleeds out not just football, it's just the schools. It's every, it's, every it's sport. Every, it's right? every sport with those two schools, yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited. But the, the bigger thing here for this year's Panda game, almost every year, it has huge playoffs, implications for playoffs. Yeah. Right? Well, they're, Ottawa 3-2. Yeah. Carlton? 2-3. Yeah, 2-3. Yeah, they're sitting 5-6 right now in the OUA. Yeah. Yeah, that whoever wins that game, well, that's gonna have a big, yeah. uh, big effect on the, their chances of making the playoffs. Yeah, Ottawa wins, they potentially cement themselves a playoff spot. Yeah, Carlton wins, they potentially put themselves in a position to bump Ottawa out potentially, depending on how the other teams do. So, I mean, I know that's always one of the, the best benefits. <laughs> but yeah, you win a game with. Can I get the but other guy out of the playoffs? Yeah, or, exactly. um, and the other thing that could shake, shake out here, depending on how this plays, you, you might play each other again in the, the playoffs. In the playoffs, how it yeah. shakes out. You know, mm-hmm. there's still a lot of season left for some of these teams, so it's exciting. Uh, Panda, watch it. Okay. So fun. I don't think I even need to ask, but, like, who's your pick for the Panda? Every, you know my pick. <laughs> I'm not saying it out loud. Just watch Panda. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Should we move on now? Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's talk about the Heck Crichton Award for anybody who just... You mean, you mean the top quarterback in the well, U Sports? Is that what you <laughs> I mean? I was getting there. Okay. So, like, the past, what, seven, eight, since 2000... And, mm, I've had it pulled up. 2007? Yeah. So since 2007, with the exception of Ed Ilnicki in 2017, the Heck Crichton Award has gone to a quarterback every single year. So yes. the so, quarterback <laughs> award. Um, well, I mean it's it's tough to not be a quarterback. Can we just can we just yes. pause for anybody who doesn't know what the Heck Crichton Award is? Yes. What is before, the Heck before we award? talk about it? 
Um, it's the award that goes to a Canadian football player who plays in U Sports, um, who's the most outstanding, voted the most outstanding, oh my god, outstanding player in U Sports. Yeah, so it's not necessarily the most valuable player for a team, most outstanding. That, that's, you know, when we talk about MVP versus MOP, this is more of the MOP style of, of, of award. Of award, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, last year... Uh, uh, Calgary's quarterback uh, Adam Sinagra uh, took the award. Yeah. And I mean, you could say he's kind of in the running still, but I think uh, if we're talking nominations from Canada West, um, Brad Lonhart, uh, Alberta's Quebec or quarterback, probably I would say is the top runner up there. Yeah. So it's. You know, it's that MVP versus MOP conversation. So, I mean, I still think from a uh, most valuable player, I, I still think that Brad is probably ahead of, of um, Sinagra. Uh, most outstanding player, he's probably got a little bit of an edge. Um, Adam? Oh, or Brad? Brad, Brad? So, it's really going to come down to the last two games. I think, in my opinion right now, those are the top two candidates. From Canada West. From Canada West. Yeah. Um, not that I don't think there's been really outstanding performance. I think Adam Macker from Saskatchewan has done a, an amazing good job. job. Yeah. Um, I think Ben Kaczynski from Alberta and from a receiver perspective has done a really good job. But, you know, if I look back at how this award is generally given out, and we'll talk about the other conferences, um, I think it's between these two guys. I think it's a two-horse race. And although it's not most valuable player, I do think the record and, and how you win and who you beat plays a role unless you have outstanding stats yeah which yeah do you want to talk about Toronto well okay yeah let's talk about Clay Sakura um this guy's stats he is just comparable to the next quarterback on what his passing yard stats or his touchdowns even so he has 20 touchdowns this season the next highest would be a three way tie. Is it who? Chris? Trey Ford, Chris Merchant, and Sam. With 11, Gerard. right? With 11. Yeah. So that's nuts. That's a nine touchdown difference between those And, two. like, yeah, it's, it speaks to what you were saying about so Toronto's not a top seed team. They're, what, seventh in the OUA? But 20, Two and three, right? Yeah. But 20 touchdowns. See, and, and the thing that I think is most impressive is that you generally know that Clay is the go-to guy. So not only does he have 20 touchdowns, he has almost 2,000 yards passing now. He's only thrown three interceptions. That's on 196 attempts. But he also has uh, rushing yards. 320. 320 yards of rushing. So that's, in total, 1,200 all-purpose yards with 20 touchdowns and only three interceptions. I think that's hard to do on a team where, you know... You're the you're guy. Not, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right? And that, I think they know, just, like, okay, I have to stop you. And that just makes it even more impressive. And we he, still can't stop you, right? Yeah. Um, so I think, one, well, they, they got a big win this year because of him. And I think that they're in the playoff race because of him. Because of him. Um, I was coaching goes into that, but I think his ability to throw the ball downfield, his ability to extend plays... He's super athletic. Um, it's impressive. He's kind of doing what Trey Ford did last year for Waterloo. Almost similar fashion, too, like winning some games and, and being electric and throwing the ball downfield. So, you know, this is the, the conversation that you have. Okay, so you look at a guy like Brad from uh, U of A. Yeah. Winning games. Stats are pretty good, right? But you're 4 and one and you're doing something that you haven't done in a long time versus a guy who's crushing it in statistics, won a game or two that you probably, people are surprised will win, yeah. um, but you're just head and shoulders above, statistic-wise. Um, you know, what do the voters think is, is most important? It's what's, yeah, exactly, and that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Again. MOP but versus MVP. If, if we're talking same, MOP... It's the same, yeah, you gotta give it to him, but... Well, well, let's, okay, so let's well, talk about the RCQ, gotta, and let's talk about... Keep talking about yeah. Um, so in the RSEQ, let's talk about uh, James Tyrell. He's wide receiver for... Whoa, whoa, we're not talking about a quarterback right now? Or? No, we're not talking oh, about a quarterback. Okay. 
uh, James Tyrell, uh, his stats have looked very impressive. He's a wide receiver, like I said, for Concordia. He has, let's see. Well, against Montreal, in one game alone. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they played Montreal, they lost by a field goal, like we talked about. How many yards did he have in that game? 170 yards in one game against Montreal. That's pretty impressive. In total, he's had 602 yards this year, two touchdowns. But I think that, you know, for a team that's playing against Montreal, Montreal like a Laval. good defensive team, Laval, good to defensive get, team. Well, just to think that he got 170 yards against Montreal. Like, what? that's nuts. Yeah. Montreal doesn't give up a lot of yards. Like, that's... Yeah. So, you know, you talk about, you know, an MVP candidate coming, or an MOP candidate coming out of the RCQ. I really like what he's doing. I think he's a dynamic receiver, explosive, gets downfield, uh, wins one-on-ones. So, um, I'm interested to see. But the, the outside of him, if you talk about the quarterbacks, I don't know if there's a quarterback that's really... Terrible. Step themselves up to say, like Dimitri Morin, another he's Team Canada Canada alumni, yeah. gold medal. Um, I think he's he's played well enough against good defenses. Um, I just don't know if he's done enough to make himself uh, a, candidate. a candidate. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean that he won't in the next couple of years, but I just don't know if he has this year. So, um, what we'll, maybe to see what James Tyrell does for the rest of the year. Be interesting to see. Yeah, he's a heck of a player. It'd be sure. nice to see a non-quarterback also in the mix. So we'll see. That doesn't yeah. mean that there can be a defensive player that maybe gets in the mix too. But I just I still think it's nuts that since two thousand seven it's been all quarterbacks. I would say that on Nikki, who was an unbelievable, unbelievable running player. back. Yeah, unbelievable running back. Um, so what about the AUS? Let's talk about uh, Hunter Guinard. He was the quarterback for. Acadia. Acadia. Yep. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Acadia. He, he's looked good. Thoughts? Um, I think he's another example of a quarterback who has benefited um, from some very talented receivers around him um, and has also done a great job of getting the ball into the hands of his talented receivers. Um, I think he's another example of you look at a 5-0 and team you look at what they're doing, you look yeah. at the quarterback, and I think mixed with his uh, ability to get the ball downfield, to score some points, I think that he's done a good job of commanding that offense. Yeah. And um, I just think that right now he's probably the, the guy in that conference that you look at and say has the potential to come out and, and be that kind of MOP candidate, um, especially with the success that they've that had. they've had this year, yeah. yeah. And, and he played super well against St. Mary's. So I think that uh, we'll see how it goes. But, you know, if, if I was to look across the Heck Crichton nominations, you know, it probably comes down to Brad, Clay, Clay. James, and then Hunter. And as the four. As yeah. the four. And if, if you look at the stats right now, and I don't think Toronto, I don't think he's going to slow down any. No. Maybe teams are starting to, s- to find ways to, to be up. able to yeah. slow him down a little bit. But at this yeah, point, but I he's, think he's, he's, like, shoulders above. he's like running away with it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, with two games left. If you just look at his his stats, actually, what they have three games left. Yeah, they have three yeah. games left. And what Toronto? I think what he's done to help Toronto. Yeah. I think that speaks um, largely to why he is yeah. probably a little bit higher than some of those other guys that you mentioned in terms of yeah. the race for the head Crichton. All right. Any more thoughts on that before we uh, talk a little bit about our predictions? I mean, I, I think I'd be excited to see, because I think there may be a defensive player that maybe we're just not looking at right now that maybe, you know, really stands out, and maybe we can, maybe they come out as the, the one of the conferences, you know, MOPs, but... Um, so, fun fact. Fun fact. I like fun facts. Tell me a fun fact that I... It doesn't look like a defensive player has ever won the Head Creighton Award. Really? Uh, That's an interesting... Well, quarterback, receivers, running back... Oh, there's a free safety. Oh, here. yeah, I see that one. Al Cherry. In 1974. 1974. Acadia. So... So that was a long time ago. 
Uh, Van Crichton <laughs> is basically a quarterback slash offensive award, but it's easier to give it to an offensive player. Well, I can see how it, a quarterback, like, I can see how yeah. it's awarded to them more often than not. They yeah. generally have a lot of, I mean, not to say that defensive players don't have a lot of play yeah. in the way that the game goes and leadership and whatever. Touch the ball every play, right? Yeah, Quarter exactly. Touch the ball every play. So it's hard to not see that. But yeah. Okay. Predictions. Let's get predictions. Let's, let's go, go back let's to the go, CJ. Yeah, let's loop back to the CJ. CJ. Okay. So clear power rankings. This is as of uh, September 30th. Okay. Um, so right now, uh, the Hilltops, one. Rams are at two. And then we got London, Regina, Windsor. And then our six, seven, eight is Hamilton, Edmonton, or the Huskies. West Shore Rebels, and then 9 and 10 is the BI Raiders and Okanagan Sun. So, you see this changing? Well, I think right by the end of the season. Hamilton's going to move up. Just to three? Four? Uh, Where do you think they're going? Well, it, it'll depend on what happens this weekend with Windsor and uh, Hamilton. I, th- I actually think Windsor may win that game again. So maybe Windsor is actually the one that jumps up. Hamilton probably Windsor probably maybe goes to three or four. Um, like you think they they top London? Yeah, I think the way it probably shakes out is at least in the rankings moving in. I think from the OFC because I think everybody else is gonna kind of stay stay the same. Stay the same. London will probably drop down a bit just because of their loss to Windsor, and they don't really get to make it up against a, another big team for the rest of the year, and then whoever wins between Hamilton and Windsor, which I think Windsor probably takes that game, I think will be the one that... Do you think uh, so? I do. Well, and only because they, they beat them already once this year. Um, and they... Honestly, they beat them pretty one-sidedly. Um, like anything can happen. Anything can happen, And, right? like, so. Hamilton's... The past few games, they looked pretty good. And yeah. So, I think... It's kind of tough yeah. to say in that with, like, the OFC, because... Like we said earlier, there's so much parity. Yeah, so I mean that's top ten. Um, I you know I think that you know the top three teams are the the Hilltops, the Rams, and honestly probably the Thunder is probably number three, or Vi for me is probably number three, um, and then I would say it's probably a Hamilton or Windsor, and then the rest can the rest, yeah. can can kind of be top tens are. Uh, the top fifty, right? Because yeah. once you get past the obvious, it's it's mostly just opinion. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, well, with that aside, okay, let's talk about potential playoff matchups and like how we think the or how we see the conferences kind of finishing out and yeah potential playoff matchups. So let's start with the uh, let's start in the BCFC. Well, so, I, I mean, uh, with Langley, I don't. Do you I see don't, them? I don't see them losing. I yeah. I think they're gonna they're gonna finish one. I think West Shore is going to finish two, and then between the other two, it's a toss-up. Or even, yeah, between yeah. the other two, it's a toss-up. I think VI will, 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 will end up third, and then Okanagan fourth. Okay, so that would mean that we're jumping ahead a little bit here to playoffs, but in that case, if Langley finishes one, Okanagan four, you have that matchup in the first round. I think, uh, I, think I mean, Okanagan and Langley have... Uh, uh, history of the past five or six years of playing each other tough and trading some games. But I still think you gotta give it to Langley Ooh. just because they, I feel like they've just dominated I mean, this year. They've just been put so it, good. Put it this it. way, right now Langley has 323 points for, Okanagan has 170 points for. That's almost double the offensive production. Yeah, and I don't so that's think... That's tough. I, know, I think it's gonna be hard to compete with that. Yeah. Um, you know, West Shore and Vancouver, that's a toss-up for me. I think that either of those teams can win. And, you know, I if you agree. look at, you know, the two of them and, and how they've kind of... Played head-to-head. Okay, so the first, so West Shore versus VI, was a 39-30 win for West Shore. So close, the yeah. second one was a 20-14 to 14 win. Also pretty close game. So, Both you know, you're talking about a 9-point and a 6-point difference. And playing a team three times in a year, 
it's hard to beat a team twice, never mind three times. Um, so, although I'll give Westra the edge in that one, I think that VI yeah, can easily, not easily, not like it would be easy for them to do, but could flip the script on them in that one. Well, yeah, I think they've had a lot of tight games. They play, they, I don't know, they both have looked good. Yeah. I think just, just to be different, I think I would pick VI over uh, West Shore. Yeah. Just keep it interesting. Yeah. Well, and I think they, uh, like I said, um, I think it could have to go, be the team three times. I, I think it can go either way. Yeah. It, like, it's going to be a tight game no matter what. Yeah. So that would, you know, in the way we see it shaking out, that would potentially give a Langley, um, you know, VI, West Shore, one of those two teams playing Langley in the finals. And, you know. I still don't really know if I see either one of them beating Langley. Beating Langley. I mean, I don't know either. But, I mean, the only team that's really played Langley close is, uh, you know, VI. That was a 12-point game that they lost to Langley and a 25-point game. The West Shore Rebels were the only ones that really gave it a, you know, kind of a gave close game kind of, against yeah. Langley. So, you know, I, I'd look to see Langley kind of come out, right? Yeah, I think they're just going to be really, really tough to beat. Yeah. Because they've just looked... So good. Actually, in saying that, Okanagan played them fourteen to ten, so played lightly. So, but that was the I mean, most game that yeah. they obviously had. But like, of, anything could still happen. But yeah. with that being said, I still don't. Pick, I don't see any of those teams coming out. Yeah. And beating lightly. Yeah. So then the PFC. Do we think the same thing? But it's for hard. The it's Hilltops. it's so hard to pick against the Hilltop. Like. Their points for four or two points against 70. 70. Like, yeah. That's that's just like nuts compared to everyone else in their their uh, conference. Yeah, so I, you know, if you look at the standings in that conference, if I have to bet, you know, it's probably going to be a Hilltops and Thunder final. Yeah. Um, it'll be played in Saskatoon. And it's hard to go into Saskatoon and win. You know, the last the last team to beat the Hilltops was, you know, for a PFC championship was the Regina Thunder. So, can it happen? Yes. Um, do I think it's likely? That's tough, man. Uh, I just... I don't know if I'm betting against yeah. a guy with over 200 wins. Yeah, that's, that's the it's thing simple there. As that, it's just right? hard. It's hard to bet against them. And that's the thing. Yeah. I, I... Yeah, I'm with you there. I think... Uh, yeah. I think the... Saying like the conference is gonna finish the way that it is right now with Saskatoon, the Huskies, Thunder, and then the Rifles, um, and then I think Saskatoon's coming out top of it. Yeah. And then in the OFC. <coughs> so the OFC. Um, so the interesting thing is, you basically want to get that first seed for the OFC teams, and it looks like now it's between Hamilton and Windsor who's gonna get that first seed because. Whoever they're going to play in that four seed between Ottawa, Niagara, or GTA, they're not very strong teams. So getting that first seed gets you home field throughout the playoffs, but it also gives you, which for better or worse, you know, some people want a really tough game uh, throughout the way, but it gives you a little bit of a, a ability to, to play, a, you know, not a softer game, but maybe an easier game for that first one. Um, that Before two, three seed. Tough. Yeah. That two through C, so you know who it looks like from the way it probably shakes out is the you know the the B feeders would be the three seed. Um, I wouldn't want to play them, and I'm not I'm not just saying that as a guy who potentially yeah. is going to cheer for them for the rest of the uh, season. They're tough, man. Their defense is tough. They're physical. Their offense is uh, super electric. Uh, Tazzy Van Bell, uh, both in the run game and the pass game has been dynamic, uh, and, you know, London's already beat Windsor once. They played Hamilton to a three-point game. So whoever has to play London is going to be a real a tough, tough spot. Yeah. So, you I know... I think no matter what in this conference, unless you're first, it's really going to go. Go to the game of the week this week, that Hamilton-Windsor game, yeah. is incredibly important to how this whole OFC flushes out. And I think that, in the end, I'm going to say it, and this isn't my bias... But it's 100% my bias it's, I was just that thinking. I think London's coming out of this conference with the... You think the so? 
Yes. I actually think it's gonna 100% be hundred percent bias. I think it's gonna be Windsor. Yeah. I and I and I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with that. I think Windsor in watching them again this week, they um, they're really good. They and their coach uh, coach, coach Morenci well, is is yeah. a, a really good coach with a lot of experience. Um, so I, I think it's Windsor. Yeah. You think it's London, but do you actually think it's London? I don't know. I really like London, <laughs> I, and not just because I, I'm a Beast alumni, um, but because I just think that um, they have a lot of talent. And okay, so hypothetically, London comes out. How do they match up? With the other conference. I don't know. If, if we're projecting right now that Langley and the Hilltops are the teams, so, and I'm not sure who comes out to play who this year. I have to check that, but I, I want to say that the PFC plays the OFC, and if that's the case, we, so I was a coach on the 2012 London Beat Peters, when we won the OFC championship. Yeah. We went out to Saskatoon to play the Hilltops. Uh, it was not pretty, to say the least. And we had a really good team, uh, and I can make all the excuses in the world, but we only scored one touchdown on that team, and they were really good. Well, I think it just speaks how good that Hilltops team is. And the thing that's very different for this o- the OFC teams is they just haven't played that type of competition on an ongoing basis. So it's hard to all of a sudden play a team like that. At that high of a level, yeah. yeah. And traveling is not easy too, so that's a that's a big piece. Especially of it when you're well. traveling time zones and yeah. going somewhere completely new. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, whatever team between Hamilton, London, and Windsor that that comes out of it, will be battle tested because those are three really good teams. It's gonna um, be tough. Tough playoff schedule. Tough the playoff schedule. So I'm I'm excited to see who comes out. Uh, the Canadian uh, Bowl Championship is always a you know great time. It's a great event. And I think it's one of the... It's good football. Yeah, it's really good football. Yeah, and it's one of the most underrated, like, Canadian things that we have. Like, the Vanya Cup is a very Canadian thing that we have, which is fantastic. It's a great cup. But the Canadian Bowl is the is the same like, level. Yeah, I feel I, like... I, I wish it was talked about more because yeah. it is, like, very, very exciting football. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll make sure to, to, to be talking about it lots on our social media, so pay yeah. attention. Um, okay, so that's uh, the CJ. Uh, go over to eSports. Let's start out east again in the AUS. I think we already kind of talked about how we yeah. see this finishing with Acadia coming out on top and coming out of it. Do we still, do we still agree with that? Yeah, I think so. And I think that um, although you know Acadia probably comes out of this division again, um, I think that final game, if I, I, I do see Acadia being in that final game, um, but here's another division where you see each other a lot, and these coaches know each other very well. So, for example, most of Mount A's coaching staff, uh, with Coach Pete Frazier as the head coach, are former Acadia coaches. So they these guys all know, know each other, each other very well. well. Yeah. Um, so not only is it hard to play teams two or three times a year, uh, it's hard to hide things from guys and and get into a playoff and, and show something that you've never they've never seen before. Yeah, because they play each other so often. Yeah, and they know each other. It's not like it's not like the the East Coast is a small or a big no. place. Like it's a small place. Guys know each other. The, the players know each other. So um, I, I I I agree with you. I think Acadia is the team that comes out, and I think that they're the most set up to be able to compete against the other conferences. I just think that uh, it, think it's once, not going to be easy road. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think once they do get out. I don't know how I feel about their chances against some of the other teams, but like you said, anything can happen. Yeah. And it's not like they played bad. Like they're a good team. They're yeah. a really good team. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Okay, let's. Uh, what about the RFEQ? This one. It's a little bit tough. I don't yeah. know who I see coming out of this. So the thing here is that, you know, years past, it's like okay, what's the final game you're gonna be like? Well, who who between Montreal and Laval is gonna throw the most amount of rocks at each other? <laughs> To get, nice job, I'm, I'm stealing <laughs> purely Jim. Uh, Thanks, Jim. Jim Mullen, uh, take that one from you. Um, but I think there is the potential for maybe an upset in that semifinal game between you know 
Miguel or Concordia potentially upsetting one of Montreal and Laval. This is the year that I, I like, before I would have been like, no way. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm even going to watch those games. This year, I'm going to watch those games. I actually agree with you. It's funny we agree on something. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't usually happen. <laughs> no, it does not. But I do, I actually agree with you. I, I have a feeling, I have a, I have a feeling that we're going to see something crazy happen in this uh, division. I, if, so if, if I was to pick, okay, so if you were to pick the upset, who do you think the upset is? Concordia over Montreal. I agree. I yeah. think Concordia has the ability to upset one of these teams. Well, uh, yeah. I think they could do it to Laval, too. I think they could upset either one. Yeah. If, if it stays how it is right now with Montreal at the top, I, I think Concordia has a very, very good chance. I said yeah. earlier, I think Brad collinson has got this team moving in the right, right direction. direction. Um, they need to be able to get more points on the board. That. I think their defense is pretty strong in places, and uh, I think he's a really good coach, and they've got a really good coaching staff. Not to not to say anything about Montreal and Laval's coaches because they're some they're of the phenomenal. best in the business. Yeah. Um, coach Constantine is probably the best in the business. Um, so I think I'm probably the most excited about an RCQ playoff that I've been in a while. I, I'm always going to watch a Montreal Laval because they're. I don't know. If I, I would say they're exciting games, no, but they're, they're entertaining games. Two good teams. Two really Power good teams. You like football. You yeah. it's, it's something great to watch. But I think there's there's a chance here for something. So it would be interesting if yeah. uh, so if Concordia did so if it stayed like this, Montreal of Al McGill Concordia, um, if Concordia did upset, that would mean Laval, Laval and, and Concordia. Then I, I don't know if they could do it twice. That's the, that's the that's thing. a tough road. So here's the thing: for either McGill or Concordia to get into that conference, <laughs> you got to go against two of the best teams in the country. In the country, yeah, which is tough. That's a tough thing for anybody to do. Yeah. So like even just physically, right? Just to be able to take that beating, well, even survive mentally, it, like give it. Do you know how much mental preparation it takes to go up against, <laughs> against yeah. a team like Montreal and then have to do it again against yeah. a team like Laval? Like, that's tough. That is tough for those three, four teams in the RSEQ because you yeah. gotta go through two powerhouses if you want to make it out of there alive. Agreed. But it'll be interesting. But I do think, with all that being said, I think Laval is still gonna come out of the conference. You think Laval's gonna come out over Montreal? Yeah? I think so. I think so, yeah. I. It's hard to bet against Laval. They're the current. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're currently. Oh, Danny Cup champions. Yeah. The thing that's a little bit, different, I think they've, they're a little weaker on the offensive line than they've been in the past. Not weaker in the sense, I mean, but. they've lost some guys, so um, quarterback, you know, they have a new quarterback. They have a new quarterback. Yeah. Um, so they're susceptible, but I, I don't blame you for betting them. I think this year's much earlier. Yeah, I think this but is like, also, like, we, we've said this before when we talk Canada Cup, it's so hard to bet against the defending champions. Yeah, it is really hard. They're the defending champions for a reason. Yeah, the team's not the same as it was last year, but it's just, yeah. they have the experience, and, like, it's hard to bet against that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Canada West. So, Canada West. Uh, I think this is interesting. Man. This is going to be a, a really interesting one, because I think anything can happen. In I mean, one. you got to start with who wins this weekend, Calgary or Alberta. I'm gonna give the upper hand to Alberta. See, I'm gonna say Calgary. Well, yeah. actually, can I take that back? Because oh, I don't. Already said it, no, so no, no, I don't. I don't know if I see Calgary losing two games in a row. That's why. That was I don't, my Yeah, that's why that I don't know if I can pick Alberta. Like, yeah. part of me is like, okay, Alberta, like they could, but Calgary's gonna be pretty pissed off that they just lost. Yeah. So I, because of that, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It's gonna. I think it'll be a close game. I I agree. I think though, with that loss, I think those coaches are gonna take it personal. Yeah. I think that they're gonna their guys are gonna be as prepared as they can be to be able to to, to beat Alberta in Calgary fashion. I think Alberta is gonna do everything they can to make sure. Are that they, they take playing team. in Calgary or are they in Alberta? That's a solid because question. That, that's gonna change. They things. so Friday night. We'll have to 
to check on that. But I think that... It's uh, at Calgary. Okay, so that's even harder for Alberta, because yeah, you gotta travel to Calgary. You already played them at home, and you lost a, you know, a 10-point game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, but the, here's the thing, though. Calgary right now, there's a ton of snow. The weather is not very good. Who does that benefit? I think it benefits... Actually, I don't know who it benefits. I don't know, because I feel like they both are They're probably both pretty passing accustomed teams. To... Yeah. I don't know. It'll be exciting. I think that... It's going to be exciting. Honestly, if we're to talk right now, projecting the Canada West, I don't think I could project the Canada West. It's just so tight. Like, the thing is... Top Manitoba, four teams, I just don't know. Manitoba and Saskatchewan, like we said, they can win against anyone on any given night. Well, you look at last year, Saskatchewan had an unbelievable run <laughs> to take the Canada West, to get to Western, and to be leading after two quarters. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just I, think that conference is just so tight. Like, I, I don't know. I know there's a fence and we're both sitting on it right now. I'm okay with it. I'm going to say right now that okay. I I don't... Okay, I, no, no. I, I'm <laughs> good with saying I don't no, know. No, okay, you have to pick one. I don't have to. Yes, you do. Who do you think is going to come out of the West? I... Saskatchewan. Okay. I, I don't think it's going to be Cali. The last time I, I didn't pick Saskatchewan against yeah. the prediction... <laughs> I got, got, I got yelled you at. You got yelled at. And for good reason, because I was wrong. So well, I think we Saskatchewan. both were. We both bet, yeah. bet against Saskatchewan. Yeah. Not to not to say that what Alberta is doing right now isn't unbelievable. Not to yeah. say that Calgary isn't the team to beat. Not to say that Manitoba can't win every week. Um, I think Alberta's coming out of Canada West. You think Alberta? I think they're going to come out. That's a, that's a big yeah. turnaround. I think they will. All right. I think they will. I'm okay with that. So let's go to the OUA. Oh, yeah, this is tricky, too. It's tricky, and it's not tricky at the same time. Okay, okay. Well, let's say Western Mac finish 1-2. They have the bye, so let's just... Who else makes the playoffs? So I think Waterloo's in at 3 or 4. Probably 3. Waterloo. And then we have this big jumble. So we have Guelph, Ottawa, Carleton, Toronto, Queens, Laurier... Count Windsor out? Uh, yeah. Probably, yeah. Well, and right before I move on here, I do want to say that um, Windsor under head coach um, JP Cercelli uh, is a different team than they've been in the past. And what they've done has been uh, really, really impressive. They are playing with a young group with not a ton of experience and playing physical and tough. And that's a team that, um, if anyone, you, sh- you should look for this team in the future, because they're going to do some really good things. But, yeah, I think it's basically... Okay, so we a, have... It's a toss-up right now between Ottawa, Carleton, Toronto, Queens, and Laurier. Okay, so you... So, Western, Mac, they're through. You think Waterloo, Waterloo and Guelph, Guelph are going to stay? Okay, so then, for the 5-6 spots, we got Ottawa, Carleton, Toronto, Queens, and Laurier going for it. That's so... tough. I mean, uh, here's the, the thing Panda's too. Gonna have a huge, There's uh, still three games. Yeah, that's the thing in Canada, yeah. right? One of these teams has to lose this weekend. If it's Carlton, I think it puts Carlton in a really tough spot to make the playoffs. I think you have to win four games to make the playoffs this year. That's my thought. You win four games, you can make the playoffs. Yeah. If Ottawa wins, they've Carlton. I think, I think Ottawa I think, solidifies. The yeah. Spot. If Ottawa wins, they're gonna be. If Carlton loses. They're basically fighting for the rest of the, the season, the last two games. They have to win out. And, you know, well, if, if I'm going to look at their the, the schedule right now, uh, looking at the rest of October. So, Carlton plays Ottawa. You know, say they lose that game. Then they play Laurier, which needs to win. And then uh, they play, I believe it is... Uh, oh, you already said Laurier. So they play Mac and Lorde, yeah, Mac which are two tough, tough games. Tough game. So you lose to Ottawa, you have to win out. You win to Ottawa, you might still have to well, win, I think win one of those to, two last games. Yeah, they still have to win. Um, now Lorde, though, similarly is in the same situation. So you look at Lorde's schedule. They play Windsor this weekend, which is a good matchup for them. They play Carlton and Waterloo. So they have to win at least two of those games. 
Those are, uh... So that means you gotta get Carlton a win against and, Waterloo or Carlton. So Carlton and Waterloo games, those are tough for them. That's yeah. tough. You know, when you look at what's Toronto look like for the rest of the year. So Toronto plays Mac, York, and Guelph. So not also, an easy stretch for them either. Also very tough. Um, I think when push comes to shove, the standings are going to be as is. Yeah, I, I agree. I kind of see maybe Laurier sneaking in. Well, then who sneaks out? I think it depends on what happens this weekend with Camden. Because I no, think... You, you made me pick earlier, so... <laughs> I know, but I think if Carlton loses, I don't think they're going to... Well, it's, it's, it's a tough road for them up if they lose that game. Yeah, because who, you said they're playing Waterloo, or Mac, Waterloo, Mac and, and Laurier. And then Ottawa, right, yeah. So I think if they lose this weekend, I, I just, I don't know if I can see that. Like, I, I think Laurier might have an edge. So, and then and we're not even talking about Queen. So Queen technically has an opportunity here as well. So Queens, yeah, they're right there. Queens finishes the season. They have two more games. They finish the season with... Guelph. Uh, tough game. And... York. York. So one of those two games is winnable. Can they pull off... They have to pull off an upset against Guelph. If they can pull off an upset against Guelph, they'd be 4-4, four four, which is a potential get in the playoffs. Tough I think game, that's a tougher road. That's I think... Tough. Toronto has a tough road. They still have three games left. I think York is a winnable game for them, and they would have to upset one of Mac or Guelph. Those are tough. Tough games. Tough games. I think the best case scenario would be for Carlton, and you know, say Toronto or say Ottawa loses this weekend, so they would be three and three. They have to win one of their their next two games. Which are against who? So, Western. Ottawa plays Western to finish the season. Good luck. And they play Toronto, I believe. Or is it no, Windsor? They play Windsor. Windsor. They play so, Windsor. you know, a win again, uh, but Windsor is not an easy, going to be an easy team, but it's tough to travel up to Ottawa. So, if Ottawa loses this weekend, they can still be able to play against Windsor, get to that 4-4, four and, four, and then I think yeah, they I win some tiebreakers over Queens. Yeah. Um, I think, so, yeah, I think Ottawa is going to be in for sure. I think it's that, really, that six, that bubble spot that it's going to be tough. So what you're saying is, it all comes down to Panda this weekend. Yeah. Against, it does. if Carlton it can really, win this game, it really does. I think we know who our six seeds are. Well, yeah, it yeah. really does. It, it's like a five-six matchup, Ottawa Carlton, like, I don't know. Yeah. I really think the rest of the OUA depends on what happens at Panda. So. All right, so everybody watch Panda. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. And I think it just makes it that much more exciting of a game, too. Yeah. I still think that all roads go through <laughs> what? Um, Western. They go through London. And I just, I believe that Both in direction. this league, the, the thing that makes you succeed is a quarterback and an offensive line. And yeah. a defense. Okay, I'm saying a lot of things. You're saying like a I'm whole saying team. basically the whole team, but <laughs> I think that with um, their defense is playing really well, they have a very good offensive line. Not as good as they have in, in the past couple of years. They're a little little younger, but the the big linchpin here, Coach. no Coach. quarterback, quarterback, Chris. quarterback, Chris Murphy. Yeah, and I just think that he is a step above. But I think that Mac or Guelph have the best How chance. How much does it kill you to say that? That Guelph has a chance. I mean, they've been the team that have, have been, have They're had good. the most opportunity to beat Western. They beat Western. They know how to beat Western. There's very few teams that know how to beat I Western. Think, Mac, Guelph, and Carlton can say they know how to beat Western because they beat Western once. I think Guelph's biggest downfall is their offense, though. I think that I if, if Theo Landers can play his best game, yeah. that's what puts them ahead. It all again it comes back to quarterback in this league. Yeah. Because it really comes down to if if Theo Landers cannot make mistakes, make I good think, throws, on time throws. Yeah. I think Guelph and Mac have the defensive capability to take on Western. Yeah. It's just 
I don't know if they can match the yeah. the offense. Well, Mackerel and Grace do it. Oh, he's crushing it. Yeah, he's good. I yeah. really like. I mean, I'm biased again. Well, national yeah. team player, won us a gold medal, but I think uh, he's got the poise and oh yeah, he can do it too. But I think that I think it all rose from okay. Western. So you think it's gonna be well, who's your final two? Oh, you wait, Western Mac, Western Glow. Well, Guelph started to watch back. I'm going to say Western Mac. Yeah. Coach Fantastic's got that team back to kind of where he expects that team to be. And I think Western still takes it. I think. Well, yeah, I think Western's going to come out no matter yeah. what. Unless so, something crazy You happens. know, the four teams that we project right now, you're projecting Alberta, Western, Laval, and Acadia. Yep. I'm projecting um, Saskatchewan. Western, Montreal, and Acadia. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Because yeah. we'll, I think we're going to do a playoff. We'll do yeah, a playoff we will podcast. do a playoff podcast. Yeah, so those are the... There's those a are lot the of things sure. still up in the air right now. Yeah. So, so, and, and so CJFL, I think, just as a recap, we projected that... Uh, I think we agreed on everything. No, because you didn't... You oh, no, I picked it. Windsor. Yeah, picked so London. Langley, yeah. Hilltops, Windsor for you. London for Aaron. To my chagrin. And London for me. Winter's to my gonna, bias. I think Windsor's going to come out of there, but okay. we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. Well, that's it's been a fantastic season of football so far, and that's just the CJFL and U Sports. That's not talking about SAJF. That's not talking about out east um, with Holland College and their, their division. That's not talking about all the amateur football that we've had this year that's been fantastic. Um, we've had a lot of really cool initiatives that we've been doing on our social media. Yeah, games of the week, players of the week, national team players of the week. Play players of the, of the week. week. Make yeah. sure you get those in. Those Upsets of the week we started. Um, yeah, yeah, there's it's a lot a of really season. good content. And, and if, I mean, it's only the start of October, so we still have a month and a half left of awesome football. But there's not, no shortage of awesome football. And that's not even talking CFL. And don't forget, if you have any crazy plays you want us to share, just tag us on social media at Football Canada because we'll share them. So, and use hashtag SB Play of the Week. Um, yeah, football season. It's been crazy. It's been good. I am excited to see the next couple of or month or so, month and a half and a bit. I guess no, so two months. Yeah, two months. Two months. Two months. Okay, make sure that you uh, like our social media. Follow us on uh, on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Facebook, YouTube. YouTube. Our um, social at, media handle is. Uh, we're at Football Canada on Twitter, at Football Canada underscore official on Instagram, and at Football Canada on YouTube and Facebook as well. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, hit that little bell too, so you get a notification when we uh, upload a podcast every three months. And <laughs> no, we'll, uh, we're, no, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be we, doing more. We got another one coming soon. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, we'll be doing another one when playoffs roll around. So okay. we're not going anywhere. And on that note, uh, for Venetia and I, that's the end of review podcast number four. Bye.